hard to breathe, feels like floating. So full of love, my heart's exploding. Mouth is dry, hands are shaking. The heart is yours, all taken, acting weird, not for itself. Dancing around like the keyboard is. Finally, time for this whole show. To know how it feels to fall in love. I'm so proud of you. But you know what I'm talking about. Nobody wakes up and says, I just want to have a bad day today. No, 
You choose that. But understand right here, it says, it is God's will that you should be sanctified. That means then, if we could reverse the text, it would be easy to say, it is the devil's will for you not to be sanctified. Well, could we agree with that? Right? We could agree with that. But but if I asked you right now, what does sanctify mean? What would you say? One word. Holy. Humble. The third. Mean. Clean. I like that. Anybody else? That's because I can't hear you. You gotta speak up. Clean. Pure. Alright. Now that's the holy version of it, sanctified. But you want to know what it really means under definition? It means the state of proper functioning. Let me give you a, a little bit of a breakdown. For example, for example, a pen is sanctified to write. Right? That's the point of a pen, is not to stab your friend. The point of a pen is to what? Write. The point of these glasses. Exactly, you're getting the point. So when the Bible says it's God's will for you to be sanctified, not only is he saying pure and like you said, clean and all these other humble and all these great words that you use, he's saying that is your purpose. That is your purpose. Everything, this auditorium has a purpose. That light bulb has a purpose. Those drums have a purpose. Those speakers serve a purpose. Nothing was made in this world without a purpose. Everything you look at, those chairs that you're looking at, they're not there to look pretty. They're so you can sit your butt down. That's their purpose. The problem is that a lot of us are human beings, we're all human beings, and we never discover our purpose. Why? Because we are not sanctified. We don't follow God's will, we follow the devil's will. So and that turns out to be where you're lost, you make mistakes, you do stuff that you regret, so on and so forth. And as we had titled this series, uh, What's Love Got to Do With It? I'm going to talk about something that I know is very uh, uh, evident at school. I, I understand it. It's all over the media. It's all over music. I understand it. But, but watch what it says here. Look at what it says in verse 4. It says that each of you should learn to what? Somebody say control. Control your friend's body, your own body. Now stay with me. In a way that is holy and honorable. Okay, so notice this. It's telling you to control your own body, which means what? That if you don't control it, then you're uncontrolled or you're out of control. Right? How many of you know youth? Don't point to them. How many of you know youth at school that you're like, oh, they're out of control? Right? Yeah, don't, don't point, don't, don't point, don't point, don't point. Yeah, they're out of control. They're out of control. And you're like, oh my God, how come their parents don't tell them anything about them? And they're just whack. They're just in another level. Like they've been smoking some stuff. They should be smoking. They're just crazy stuff. Ow, whack, crazy. Okay, well here the Bible is telling me that each of us should learn. If it says learn, what does that mean? Where do you hear that in a, a lot? Uh, school, right? And what is learning? Repetition. Over and over. Turn your books to page. You're like, oh, I can't stand this teacher. I wish he would die. You know, whatever the case may be. You know? And so you're going to school to learn. And now some of you are saying, oh, it's a waste of time. I don't want to be here. I'm done. Whatever, whatever. Okay. I'm just trying to paint a picture that you, you can't uh, be born at two years, four years, and say, well, I'm going to go get my, my high school diploma. No. You have to go through the process. First grade, second grade, fourth grade, sixth grade, and go through the test and go through all these stars testing and all this stuff that they put you guys through. God bless you all for that. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that to learn means to practice, means to uh, go over something over and over and over. Just like my football player here, boys, the football players that I have from the Hawks, the Cardinals, the Greyhounds, the Bobcats, the Lions that I have here in this place. You, you don't just show up on Friday night like this, well, I'm ready. Put me in, coach. No, you're going to be like that Corbin that just wrecked. No, you have prepared your body to do what it has to do. You've learned the plays. Okay, and if you haven't learned them, the coach will sit your butt down until you're ready. All right, well, it's the same thing here. It's telling us it's God's will, first of all, for me to be holy. But then it says, I have to learn how to control this. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to control yourself, dude. All right. Enter... Enter, stay with me, enter pick number one, the Ferrari 2015 California. Now I want you to just pay attention to me because I'm going to go in this direction just for a minute. 
This is a 2015, also known as La Ferrari, LA Ferrari, or La California, that's what it's known as. It just came out this year, okay? And this car is hot. Somebody say it's hot. hot. All right, now watch this. This car represents sex. Some of you are like, I gotta put my seatbelt on. <laughs> All right, I should have got the drivers in. Here we go. This car, for the sake of this lesson today, what gear are you in, represents sex. Somebody say sex. sex. So you're gonna go back to your parents tonight and you're gonna say, Pops, Mom, a 2015 Ferrari, sex. They're probably gonna slap you. They're probably gonna slap you. But you tell them that Pastor Pepper told you to say that. That means you're paying attention. Okay, so watch this. This car represents sex because cars are sexy and sex is addictive. Now, even before we do any of that, we see this one car. Here's the thing about this one. You don't go to, uh, no offense if you work there or have a family, you don't go to Bird Ogden and buy a Ferrari like this. No, you don't. You don't even go to Houston or Dallas, or Ferrari of California to get this car. The only way you can get this car is if you have a previous Ferrari. So you have to have had a Ferrari before. Now stay with me because I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it all thin, I'm gonna make it all put together in. People that own Ferraris own Ferraris because they've gone through a background check and they understand that there is a certain standard or level of person who can drive a Ferrari. So if you see somebody with a Ferrari, don't think it's because they have money. Because there's a lot of people that are rich, but don't have a Ferrari. They can't, it's not that they can't afford it, but Ferrari says, no, you're not good enough for our car. Thank you, we're headed in that direction. They can't handle it. They can't handle it, you're right. Can y'all hear me? I feel like I got a roast off. Can y'all hear me? Can you hear me? We're good. Okay. So I have to petition for our and say, hey man, uh, I really want one of these. They say, take a number, we'll call you. And there's only about 150 of them made. Unique. Somebody say unique. unique. You got to reserve one, they will think about it. Pick number two about this car, check out the leather. The leather is hand stitched. This is not this is not the leather from the pulga. <laughs> this is real cowhide, real authentic leather. And if you really, I don't have a laser pointer, but if you really look closely to the back seat, that's a golf set with the same leather as the seats. This car is not run through a machine. It's not run through an assembly line. There is a person who literally stitches it by hand. I'm kind of trying to get to a point here in just a minute. It's been tailored, it's unique, and it's by hand. Picture number three, the steering wheel. I know the drums are in the way, but what makes a Ferrari is this steering wheel. If you look at it closely, it's got different settings. You probably won't see it on the bottom right, but it's got different settings. It's got different shift gears. It's got a comfort gear, a sport gear, and then it even has a race gear. Three gears, and then it's got shifters on the side, also known as paddle shifters. All right? So you get to choose if it's a beautiful Sunday or a beautiful sunny day on Saturday, I'm going to go comfort today and just cruise it at 100. Or... This punk with a Mustang GT thinks he's got me. I'm going to put it on sport. Or some people that got new challengers, hashtag David, pull up next to it and go, okay, let, let me show you what race means. And now you unleash the beast. Somebody say unleash the beast. Okay. You can easily choose the setting that you want. And then you see in the bottom left hand that it says engine start, you start the car with a push of a button on the steering wheel. Somebody say, wow. wow. Isn't that awesome? Okay, now, you want to look good. They've already thrown in the, the golf bag, but look what they've thrown in picture four. Matching luggage. 
No, yeah. This is not the Walmart luggage. This is not Fires and Paredes, Dollar Tree, no. This is, you can't even buy this luggage. It comes with that car. Matching from the exact same leather that are in the golf bag and that are in the seats. Again, because everywhere you go, the luggage will go with you. But you don't buy a Ferrari for the luggage. You don't buy a Ferrari for the steering wheel. And you don't buy a Ferrari for its color. You buy a Ferrari for pick number five. The engine. You see, it's hard to match up and make it another engine like Ferrari. People don't know how they make these engines, so Ferrari competes with Porsche, Porsche competes with Lamborghini, and the Germans go at it, and the Italians, and the Japanese. You get where I'm going with this. This baby, somebody say baby, baby. has a twin turbo V8 that is fuel injected and makes 553 horsepower, 553 horsepower at 202 miles per hour. You buy one of these, you'll never be late to school again. I promise you that. And if you are, you got problems. Again, but here's the thing. Will Ferrari give it to you? Will they say, we know you got the money because you're pretty swag, but should you have this treasure? Should we give you this treasure? Can you handle it? Because here's the thing. Not only do they give you the golf bag and they give you the luggage, they give you lessons to drive it. Did you know that? So they take you on this three-week course and they say, you're going to come with us and we're going to teach you how to drive this thing. And if, if you drive this car slow, they will be able to tell in the next oil change. And they will get mad at you and say, we will never give you another Ferrari again because these cars are made to be driven fast. Did you know that? The insurance on these cars is mind-boggling. About twelve to 15000 every three months. Just insurance. But here it goes again. If you're buying the car, the price of the insurance doesn't matter. Right? Because you've got it. All right, Pastor, so what are you trying to say? Well, we got to go back to pick number one again. We got to go back to pick number one. This car is unique. I told you that this car represents sex. Guess what? You are unique. In fact, there might be a bunch of people here that try to look like each other and try to look like the fashion and wear the right hairstyle and wear the right pants and maybe if I wear the right shoes, I'll look alike. But guess what? You're unique. There's only one of you made. There's only one of you made. You are so unique. You are more valuable than any car. Number two, we saw the picture that said it was hand-stitched by the finest leather. Well, guess what? God made you by hand. He actually knows how many hair you have. The Bible says it. To the T. You say, but I'm about to pull it. He already knew you were. Pastor Shivan, when I'm washing my hair and all this hair falls off, when I'm taking a shower, he knows. He knows you lost 372 hairs during that shower. He knows when you're going to go bald. You'll see about that later when you get older. He made you unique. Fingerprints, no one can match. DNA, nobody can get it. There's only one of you. And when you go, there might be people that try to imitate you, but there isn't because you are unique. In come the steering wheel. When we talk about in the next picture, when we talk about sex, when we talk about relationships, I said that cars are sexy. Cars are a thing you say, Pastor, but I don't really care for a Ferrari. I, I really, I don't care about cars. You say that because you've never been in one. But the moment you drive one, the power, the handling, the smell of the leather will attract you to say, wow, this car is legit. What am I trying to say? Sex is the same way. You are unique. You are special. You are designed and handcrafted by God. It's not one of 1,000. It's one of one. You are the original. There is no imitation. And when you connect with sex, you open the steering wheel and you begin to play with these buttons. Here's the thing about a Ferrari. I told you that you have to have lessons. 
And I told you in the beginning that you have to learn to have self-control. It is hard to control this car because it is made to go fast. This uses gas. You all use hormones. And it is hard when you guys put yourself in a situation and then you're trying to figure out, how am I going to get out of it? Why? Because sex is beautiful. Sex smells good. Sex is addictive. Sex, sex is great. That's why it says practice self-control. And here's the thing. You're on first gear. This car, in first gear, will get you to 60. Zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. Second gear, now you're still peeing out and you're already hitting 90. That is exactly what is happening in our relationships today. Instead of focusing on what, what grade, focusing on your goal, focusing on the purpose, focusing on success, focusing on God's will, you've already went to second gear. And you're already getting ready to go to third. And now you're moving at a high rate. And you're like, how did I get here this fast? Well, it's because something happened right after another. Pastor, I didn't plan it. It just happened. That's why it's just control, self-control. If I were to put a teenager behind this car and say, don't drive it fast, you'd be like, really? It's the same thing if I put a beautiful young girl and a beautiful young man together by themselves and expect nothing to happen. Really? Why do you think Jesus, when he traveled, and he traveled with his 12, why do you think they went in pairs? He says, I never want you to be alone. You know why? Because temptation is real. I'm telling you right now, I'm a pastor, and I love the Lord, and I love the law, but if I had this car, I'd probably take it to about 140. Because it's easy. It's addictive. It gets you. You want it. And you get to a point where you're like, well, I'm already here. Let's floor it. And it becomes addictive. Nothing happened. So next time, let's go for another ride in another car, in another relationship, with another girl, with another guy. Now, what God called unique and special became ran down. What gear are you in? What gear are you in? Because once you start driving, it's hard to slow this baby down. Yes, it's got 17-inch Brembo brakes made out of ceramic steel. Pastor, what does that mean? It means that they never get hot. But where are you right now? How far have you gone? This car has six gears, pedal shifters and all. Oh, Pastor, I'm already in second and third, and I don't know where I'm going after this. The things that I've done, I've already taken a full speed ahead. It's interesting because when we saw pick four, the matching luggage, I said that wherever this car goes, that luggage goes with you. Well, just like I preached on Sunday, whatever you do in the car goes with you. What you did, when nobody was watching, you think, goes with you. If you were to allow me to go even deeper, working at the Harlingen High School, dealing with kids today, today I had the privilege of working with a young lady who instead of worrying if she's going to get an A in chemistry, trying to figure out if she has syphilis, herpes, or gonorrhea. You think it's a joke? Pastor, you're just trying to scare me because you don't want me to have sex. Oh no, I'm the opposite. I want you to have sex. I want you to have all the sex you want, but I want you to do it right under God's law and under God's will, under marriage. Because what happens is when you've been run down and if this car, as beautiful as it is, you give it to anybody with 120,000 miles, nobody wants it. <laughs> nobody wants it. You know why? Because they say, oh man, I, I, don't, I don't know where it's been. Oh, it looks beautiful. But it's a little tainted. Uh, how do I know that this kid or this person that had it, how do I know that they took care of it. How do I know? Hmm. So this luggage follows you wherever you go. What's in the luggage? I don't know, you put it in there. 
Pastor, why are you telling all this? Because we've got to pick five. The heart of the engine is your virginity, is your spirit. What you give to that person, unfortunately, you can never get it back. You only get one crack at it. Pastor, you're, you're preaching a sermon that just doesn't happen anymore. That, that's real. That, that's not real, Pastor. Oh, really? Oh, really? It happens. You can't abstain. You can't be safe. So that when you get in the car, it smells like a brand new car. Have you ever been into a brand new car? The smell of a brand new car beats anything. Get into a car that smells like alcohol. Get into a car that smells dirty like KFC from last week. Get into a car that smells like cigarettes. Get into a car that people that put their dogs and their animals in. Get into a car that hasn't been vacuumed in time. And all of a sudden you're like, God, it's a pretty car on the outside, but man, it reeks on the inside. So then I ask you, as the scripture says, be an aroma where you walk. My question is, what aroma are you giving Maybe you put diesel where only super and letter was supposed to be. Hmm. Everybody wants this car. Everybody wants you to bed. Everybody wants to sleep with you. Everybody wants to have you. Everybody wants you to be the first. Everybody wants you to give it to them. You know why? Because that's the beautiful gift about it. Give me, let me be the first. Let me be the first. I know I'm making some of you uncomfortable. But I'm trying to preach something because there's, there's redemption after this. I said, but you just said that once you go to third and fourth gear, then what? Because here's the thing. If you go 110 miles an hour and slam on the brakes and you don't know how to control this baby, guess what? You're going to crash. You're going to die. You're going to be gone. Pastor, then what do I do? I've already went to third gear. I've already went to fifth gear. I, I don't know how to slow it down. I already went too fast. There's something called neutral. When you put any car in neutral, it will eventually slow itself down to the point of standing still, be still, and know I am the Lord. Pastor, you're saying there's hope. You're saying there's redeeming power. You're saying, you're saying I can go back to first year and start all over? I said, yes, but it all starts with neutral. It all starts with coming back to the beginning. Before you get into the car, ask yourself, who's going to be in the car with me? Who am I taking for a ride? Or who's taking me for a ride? Or does that person really love me? Because if they really love me, they wouldn't force me to third gear. If they really love me, they wouldn't be pushing me to fifth gear. If they really love me, they let me leave it up first and enjoy the ride and just have a great relationship. I'm not telling you not to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I'm just telling you, be careful what gear you get in. Because the only way out of it is through neutral. I said, so what, what now? Well, look what Ecclesiastes 11, 9 says. You who are young, be happy while you are young. And let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eyes see. But know that all these things God will bring to you in judgment. Oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't want to read that last part. It's only great in the beginning. I can do whatever I want. See, God's not telling you not to have fun. He's just telling you, be careful who you go for a ride with. Because if you really practice self-control, learn self-control. Learn it. If I really practice it, then you think God is taking the Ferrari away from you? Now he says, you can have it. You've earned it. You know why? You have self-discipline. You have self-discipline. Like those people that are watching, the, they run two miles a day, and then there's a piece of cake, and they're like, I can't have it. Of discipline. Like those football players that are working and working and working and say, if I drink, if I do this, it's going to mess me up for the next thing. Self discipline. It's the same thing. Can I give you? Can Ferrari trust you with their car? Can God trust you with this gift? Can He give it to you? And you say, I got it, God. You know why? Because Jesus is my co pilot. No matter what happens, we can enjoy it, we can have a good time, and it'll be good because I'm not setting myself up for failure. I'm not going on an open road. And here's the thing, you can't drive this car in any terrain. You drive it in any terrain, you mess up the suspension. You say, I don't care what I'll do, whatever. All right, you just messed up. A, oh, because I forgot to mention, this is a $250,000 car. 
You just mentioned it. Pastor, that's a lot of money. Yes, but if I put your organs and put your organs for sale and your blood and every single blood vessel and every single muscle and everything, you'd be worth more than a million. You are worth more than this. The question is, how do you see yourself? Pastor, well then what now? We see the picture of a rusted Ferrari. Oh my God, look at this gorgeous car. It's gorgeous. It, it, it used to be beautiful, but now it's all rusted. Here's the thing. They won't sell it to you like this. Go ahead. They'll sell it to you like that. How do I know if it's been in the, in the junkyard? How do I know if it's been jacked up? How do I know if it's been wrecked? You know what they call it? They call it a Carfax report. Every car has it. Every dealer has to sell you one. I want to know where this car has been. When I bought the Mercedes that I got, thank you, Jesus. I said, I want to know where this Mercedes has been. And I looked at it and I got to see this lady owned it. She changed the oil here. She changed the oil there. No problem with the paint. No problem with transmission. I'll take it. So even though something may look bad, or even though in this case something may look good, don't be fooled by your eyes. Check the Carfax. Pastor, but, but my Carfax is ruined. I've been around. I've done some stupid stuff. Pastor, I've done things that I, I didn't know in this sermon. I didn't know that it was wrong. Well, thank God for the other scripture that says about Scarlet. Watch what it says in that last picture. Jesus says it clearly. You can post it up, please. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them white as snow. What does that mean? It means that when you put it in neutral and you say, now I'm going to do your will, God, and not, not my will, your car factory report comes back clean. You can be redeemed. You can be restored. Because it's not how you start youth. It's how you Stand to your feet. I encourage you today, for those of you that are barely getting tempted to drive, be careful. Who do you put in the car with you? If you're already driving and going fast, put it in neutral. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait until disease strikes. Don't wait until something irreversible happens. God says, I can give you all the chances you want, but you're going to have to live with some of the consequences. But what are you willing to do today? Now, first things first. If you're here for the first time, and you say, I don't have Jesus in my heart. He's not in my car. He's not the driver of my, uh, he's not in control of my life. If you're not saved, you say, I don't have Jesus in my heart. This is the time for you to shoot your hand up. And you say, I want to be saved. And if that's you, I want you to run up here because we're going to celebrate with you. This is not something to be embarrassed about. This is something to celebrate. We're excited with you. So if it's just one person today that is getting saved, that's great. You have Jesus in your heart. This is your time to do it. This is your time to do it. And we're going to pray with everybody else. You're going to be given a card. Make sure you get a card. You're going to be given a card. And that card is for you to remember. That is your driver's license today. Today I got my driver's license with God. I'm going to take this back home. And know that I'm going to have him on my wheel. Go ahead, just keep getting the card. Very good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anybody else before we pray the salvation prayer? Anybody else wants to be saved? We've got three more. Thank you for being brave. We've got two more. Thank you for being brave. This is the best choice you could have made. This is the best choice you could have made. We're not here as a church to judge you. We're not here to criticize you. We're not here to say, why'd you do it? We're here to say we love you just like Jesus loves you. 13. Last call. Anybody else? 14. Awesome. Let's give this group a round of applause. 15. I know it takes courage. I know it takes courage. I know it takes courage. 16, 17, and 18. God is moving in this place. you get a card. Make sure you get a card. And you're going to pray with us, and then the altar is going to be open for everyone else, alright? 21. 21, alright. Hold on, we got another one, maybe we can recommend 
22. And if you break, 23, 24, and 25. All right. Now remember, this is not just about emotion, this is a dedication. We're going to put our, put our love in gear, we're going to put God first. 25. Bow your head right there where you are, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. You are my Savior. I am a sinner. Thank you, Jesus, for dying, for dying for me. I've made a lot of mistakes. I put the gear too fast. But today I put it in neutral. Lord Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Lord Jesus, take me to the next level. Lord Jesus, remove my guilt. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Congratulations to the 25. Everybody else, I'm ready to put my, my car, and I want, I want the Lord to be the altar is open. As you're coming up, as you're coming up, make room, make room, make room, make room. And just come up and start shooting your hands. Don't look around. Shoot your hands up. Shoot your hands up. Just shoot your hands up. Just thank the Lord. Just shoot your hands up. Shoot your hands up, guys. Shoot your hands up. Shoot your hands up. Basically telling the Lord, Jesus, you take the wheel. I'm not driving anymore. I'm not driving anymore. You take the wheel. I've made some mistakes. I've done some stupid stuff. But you take the wheel, Lord Jesus. Shoot your hands up right there where you are. We're going to worship for a little bit. we got a few minutes. Come on, just sing out loud.
you, that he can't forgive you. The question is, can you forgive yourself? You need to forgive yourself because the enemy will remind you of what you've done. You need to show him the new car that you want. And just say, hey, I've been clean. I've been redeemed. I've been bought at a price. And you've got to start living in redemption. Don't walk like you're a sinner. Walk like you're a victor. If you believe it, would you just join with somebody with there? Just hug somebody with him. And just say, hey, we got this. Hey, we got this. Why don't you love somebody? Why don't you hug somebody? Riding through the sunset now Stop tripping 